a good morning everybody. My name is Georgie Newbury and I'm a flower palmer and florist based between fashionable Bruton and up and coming Wincanton in sunny South Somerset in England. And today I've got a tiny little wedding to do. A bride, three bridesmaids, nine buttonholes and some mixed buckets so the bride can um, make some table centres and things herself, which is very nice. The colours are a sort of moody I think of it as a sort of goth look. Uh, it's sort of moody, sultry, silvery, dark purples, um, pale pink, white, very pretty. Uh, and I thought you might like to see me make a bride's bouquet. So I'm just gonna make an ordinary hand tie and then I'll show you how I turn an ordinary hand tie into a bride's bouquet. Um, so hold on, <laughs> I'll get started and then I'll show you how I do it, okay? Uh, see you in a minute. This is the material I've got. So you can see these dark chanois dahlias are the sort of moodiness, and but lots of pale and interesting. And these little pale, pale blue asters are sort of silvery, um, so they stop it being too pink. Very important it shouldn't be too pink. Uh, I'm funking it up a little bit with the absolutely breathtaking tartan dahlias. Oh. Um, here, of course, my beloved blackjack. Uh, these are really my favourite dahlias of all. And um, otherwise, lots of little bits and pieces to mix in with it all. Um, and I just popped out this morning to pick these Japanese anemones. They shed a bit, um, but when they shed, I don't mind, because look, they leave these very pretty coming seed heads and you know when you lie in bed at night and you think I'm not quite there I haven't quite cut it and you think I know those anemones will do it I needed a bit of bounce because the dahlias are quite heavy and I needed something lighter to balance the dahlias anyway that is <laughs> that's the ingredients let's get on by the way, if you enjoy the clips that we do then do subscribe there's a subscription button somewhere here and press the bell icon um, and you can always buy me a coffee <laughs> to support these little clips because uh, then I'm inspired to do more. Um, obviously, I like the fact that there's a lot of free content going out here. Um, I make sure that I don't hand out the information I give on my online workshops, uh, which are more detailed and really step by step. But uh, there are plenty of tips and tricks in here. So if this ha these clips are helping you out in any way, then you can always buy me a coffee and the link is uh, in the heading somewhere of this clip. Is that even remotely clear? Anyway, <laughs> carry on. So when you make a bride's bouquet, you want to um, imagine all the time the, how it's going to be carried. Very few people walk down the aisle like this. People walk like this, or they carry the bouquet down here somewhere. The, the bouquet, especially in a sort of rural country, with, you know, anywhere where there's a word like whimsical or wildflowers or, you know, a kind of lighter feel, people are very unformal. So what you want is your bouquet to be quite unformal. So I'm not putting too much weight into it, but it needs a little bit of weight. And the picture she sent me, had a few really dark red, a spot of really dark red in it. So I'm giving her one blackjack. Uh, this isn't blackjack actually, it's a chanois. <clears throat> and that's going to give a, a, a side of, it's gonna ground the bouquet, which otherwise is very light. This one is Bracken Ballerina, I love her. Um, and then she's got some very pale pink cosmos, a little white cosmos, some variegated corners, um, one, one or an old tour where with normal bouquets you're kind of putting four or five or something often with bride's bouquets it's just one because you want it to look as light as it you want it to look as though the bride has walked around her garden that morning and just picked some lovely flowers to take down the aisle this is a purse carrier with a variegated leaf and i can't remember the variety so good in at this time of year anyway i'm beginning to give it length what you want is strong stems that are not going to go anywhere, but lengths to give you bounce. So this, the purse carrier is doing exactly that. Um, I'm keeping it really, really loose, but I'm going to have to tie it quite tightly so that it feels strong for her. Right, on we go. 
And you can add width and wildness by taking a long stem like this. This is, but it's very light. It's not going to snap. It's not going to break. Uh, it's well conditioned. It's going to be fine. And you just add it into the side so that you've got that extra width to the bouquet without weight. Um, I don't, because the poor girl doesn't want to go down the aisle exercising her biceps too much. So you don't want to give her too much to carry, but you do, you know, there needs to be a little bit of size here. So literally, small bouquet. <laughs> oh, look at that. I've added, you know, six inches to it, just with one very, very light stem. And because I've got this stem coming out here, it's, it's lovely, it's very light. Right, I think it needs, because of the weight of the dahlias, we need a little bit more weight in there because otherwise they look like headlights. Um, and then I'll just give it some length. Now I spotted in my travels yesterday while I was teaching some students here, this lovely branch of roses. <laughs> this is gentle Hermione. And it may shed, but imagine, so here's my little posy and I add her in. And because they're all joined on, that really adds a bit of drama to the bouquet. It's a bit boing, 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 but it takes away from the kind of, uh, sort of extra importance of that. You see how that chanoir is disappearing into the mix. Um, and it's quite heavy, but if you were carrying it down here, you know how brides stand and have that photograph of everything to the side then that that's a really lovely uh stem and i haven't had to wire it or anything because it's just grown like that it may shed a couple of these are very out but it may not and if it does shed then these buds will come out so um i'll just talk to the wedding planner who's picking up in a minute and just make sure she's ready but that you see how that was just a sort of ha pretty hand tie because it's got this sort of drama here and it'll hang down really nicely. That is really, however the bride carries it, that's going to be really, really sad. Um, right, just a little bit more to support the edges and then I'll finish. So there we have her finished. And the photograph, obviously not with my enormous stomach, but the photograph is often like that. And that bouquet is going to work really well for that photograph. But also carrying it down the aisle. It's got a nice balance to it. It's very pale, got a bit of silver and the, a little bit of dark foliage. But just having those hanging, the, the dingly dangly bit you can just see against my apron is um, Covia Scandon's vine. Um, but yes, I'm quite pleased with that. And all I've done is made an ordinary hand, cut, hand tie... And then just when it's got to a little sort of central size, I've added length around the edges. And in the end, I've added length all in the same place. And it really, I mean, I think a good bridal's bouquet should look as if it's just come out of the, it looks, it should look as though it's part of the herbaceous border. And that, my friends, I think it does. <laughs> So, and actually in the end, I added a little bit of cosmos. Can you see the little cosmos? Just by my, where my hand is with my phone. I've put a little bit of cosmos in there. It just needed a bit more weight to it. Anyway, there you are, finished. Now, four bridesmaids, nine buttonholes, and then we'll all be done. I can't turn this off with one hand. <laughs> oh, look, I've untied the, cafe, the bride again and slipped her a quick cafe au lait in there. Uh, it's funny how you put a bouquet to one side and let it settle. And suddenly you see where things, a little extra, a little person, uh, it will really sing in there. So she's got one Cafe Le Dela, not a big one, but a little one. And then sweet, dinky bridesmaids, just one of those bracken ballerinas, a few roses, a lovely chanoir for some depth, some romance, um, but not so enormous uh, because the girls have got things to do. You know, bridesmaids have to work, but it's very pretty against the dress. So I think I'm quite pleased with that. Onwards and upwards, next, 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 next. So the bridesmaids are sweet reflections. I like the word 
of the bride, but much smaller because, um, you know, bridesmaids really have quite a lot to do. And if they are weighed down with large bouquets, they, they get in the way. Um, also, these would make, if you were on a budget, very nice table centres. You know, waste not, want not. If you're using little glass files like these to put your buttonholes in when you've made them, or your bouton years for you Americans, um, do be careful because in the drawer, the glass is very, very fragile and they shatter really easily in the drawer. Here, for example, I have shoved them in the drawer and there's a waste, isn't it? Broken glass everywhere. I think also really worth warning your client that the glass in these files is very fragile. So while it's a lovely thing to have your boutonnieres individually in a file of actual glass, not single loose plastic, do watch out. You don't want blood all over the party dresses. The buttonholes are really sweet. The bride wants a sort of wildish look. And obviously at this time of year, it's quite difficult because there's no, the wild is over. It's the end of the summer. But adding these little grasses and a little bit of this Veronicastrum and the silvery foliage of the Cineraria. Um, I think you Americans call it Dusty Miller. Um, gives it a sort of, and these little tiny um, asters. Gives it a sort of meadowy look. Anyway, there you go. ding a 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 ding Now it's time to pack it all up. So I made special boxes to pack up my wedding stuff because it just makes it all easier. So there's the bride, she's got her own box. And then the four little bridesmaids and the buttonholes are all tucked in here. And then here we have the ribbon. Oh, yes. So I've given the bride the very wide, darker cream. And then the bridesmaids and the bride have a narrow and a slightly wider ivory. <laughs> There's a lot of ribbon in there. Anyway, it does look very pretty, especially... If it catches the wind, I like the weight of it. So there we have a dinky wedding. With bride, four bridesmaids, nine buttonholes and six mixed buckets for the couple to make table arrangements and things themselves. And if you're on a budget, this is a really, really good way to do your wedding. You do need the time on the Friday or the day before to get it all ready. But if you get a florist to do your bouquets and buttonhole, the things that you might feel a bit nervous about doing. And then you have really, really good quality locally grown flowers. Then there's no reason why you shouldn't, if you've got time, so long as you've got time, then you can do your table centers. You can make them pretty. I mean, you know, if you want something that looks enormously professional and five star, then yes, you're going to have to pay a premium for that and go to a really good florist. But, you know, here, this is a beautiful country wedding. The weather is amazing. The light is extraordinary. So just let the flowers join in with the mix. And the venue is a beautiful barn, so it's already beautiful. So if, you have a, if you've got a bit of a budget, you know, if you don't want to spend a million pounds, then obviously not a million pounds, but you know what I mean. If you want to keep the budget a bit under control, then a bit of DIY action with wedding flowers, I think is a really, really good idea. Do... Make sure, if you want to do a DIY element to your wedding, that you book the flowers months in advance because a good grower florist like me, for example, will sell out. Uh, so don't assume that if you're doing a DIY thing, there will be flowers at the last minute. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this little clip. Um, if you have, you can always subscribe. There's a subscription button somewhere. Click the bell icon and we'll tell you when we've got new clips out. And if any of these tips and tricks have been helpful for you, then please do buy me a coffee. The link is in the introduction to the piece. Thank you very much and I'll see you soon.